In this video, we're going to talk about the role that probability plays in the Wheel of Time. Unlike previous videos, this episode gets into more specific plot points that you might consider spoilers. I won't be talking about any characters in particular, but please proceed with caution. All right, dramatic music time. Probability plays a significant role in the Wheel of Time. One book even opens up with the declaration, let the Lord of Chaos rule. Eight books later, and I'm still not sure what that means. One of the central plot devices in the Wheel of Time is that some individuals, called Tavirin, are specifically chosen by the pattern to carry out a unique purpose. Sometimes this is harmless. One of my favorite examples is when one character flips a coin to make a decision, but because a Tavirin is nearby, the coin lands on its side. The odds of this happening are about 1 in 6,000, but because of the Tavirin, this probability increased. But many times, this probability altering significantly advances the plot. Let's work out an example. One popular dice game in the Wheel of Time is called Crowns, where you roll five dice in an attempt to obtain a specific pattern. The biggest winning roll is five of a kind. We can calculate the probability of this roll based on the probability of four individual matches. Suppose we know the first roll is a four. The probability of rolling a four on the next die is one in six. The probability of rolling a 4 in the next die is also 1 in 6, but to get the probability of rolling both those dice as a 4 is 1 in 6 times 1 in 6. Then the probability of rolling two more 4s means we multiply by 1 in 6 two more times, arriving at a very low probability of less than a tenth of a percent, or less than 1 out of every 1,000 rolls. If two players roll five of a kind, the player with a higher number rolled wins. So you would need five sixes to win definitively, and the probability of that roll is one in six multiplied five times, which would be about one out of every 8,000 rolls. However, suppose a Tavirin character were playing crowns and needed to win. For example, if they needed money to continue their journey off to fight the last battle. In that case, the pattern would start to bend those probabilities, which is interesting because the pattern might give them five sixes to win outright, or give the Tavirin four ones and give all the other players three of a kind at best. This behavior isn't quite the same as having weighted dice, which would influence the individual probability of each die. It's an emergent behavior that impacts the collective probability that the Tavirin character would win. There's another example in a later book that finally resolves a long-standing problem with the world's food supply. The main character has been ordering the leaders of the world to store up food to endure the last battle, which might bring about an end to civilization. However, the world's food supply has begun to rot and become infested with parasites. The world is going to starve or so it seems. The main character tells them to open one more crate because they've been opening all the wrong crates. Sure enough, they open one more and find pristine food preserved perfectly. They open more crates, and it turns out that in their previous sample, they happened to open all the crates with spoiled food. In statistics, we call this sampling bias, where the observer assumes that the sample they've investigated represents the larger population. In this case, the world's leaders opened crates of spoiled food and assumed that all the other crates held spoiled food as well. But of course, there's a probability that all the crates in the sample were spoiled, even though there are plenty of unspoiled crates waiting to be checked. Let's suppose that one out of every thousand food crates in the supply were spoiled, and you opened 10 crates to check on them. The probability of all 10 checked crates being spoiled is a 1 over 1,000 multiplied by itself 10 times. That's a 1 out of a 10 to the 30th power chance that your sample would be entirely biased towards spoiled food crates. And yet, because one Tavirin was in a bad mood for a few thousand pages, this probability was altered across the entire world. So that's a little overview of how probability plays out in the world of the Wheel of Time. I'm looking forward to seeing how they enact this in the television adaptation.